I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Bigfoot Encounter Reports from Military Installations Fort Leonard Wood Army Base, 1982, Pulaski County, Missouri Here are the details of my Bigfoot sighting in Pulaski County, Missouri. I was in the Army Basic Training Course at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, around late May 1982. The eight-week course was almost complete. We had a few breaks and were fully rested for our one stint of overnight guard duty at some location on the post. The sites we were supposed to guard did not actually require a guard. The cadre wanted us to experience what guard duty was like for trainees. My partner that night was a Samoan man named Yunabia. As we prepared to file onto the Army Deuce and a Half, two and one half ton truck, they called off our names. Since my last name, Yangdal, is perpetually at or almost at the end of the alphabetical list, I was the last one to get onto the back of the truck. The lateral seat benches on each side of the truck face each other. Consequently, by the time I filed on, all the seats were taken and I had to sit on the bed of the truck while resting my arms on the tailgate. I decided to face out the back of the canvas-covered bed of the truck to see the sights of the army post. The post Yunabi and I were to guard was an engineer bridge crossing training site deep in the woods of the post. Fort Leonard Wood's nickname is Fort Lost in the Woods and I can understand why due to the remoteness, isolation, and density of the woods in the region. Anyway, our post was the furthest one out, so they decided to drop us off first. I'm not sure how far or what direction they took us from our basic training billets on post, but we must have ridden on the truck for at least 30 minutes when my sighting occurred. Everyone in the truck was either dozing off or inattentive to where we were going except me since they were facing each other and could not see past the canvas cover of the truck. I was still looking directly out of the rear of the vehicle. The time was approximately 18.30 hours, and it was still very much light during that time of year for early evening. The weather was clear and warm. We came to a T intersection on the dirt road. As we turned left at the intersection, I looked down the other direction on the road, which we didn't turn. Approximately 25 yards down the road, I saw an enormous Bigfoot. I wasn't looking for it, nor did I think that there had ever been sightings in that region of the country. It was automatic. Boom. No doubt what it was. What I saw was a creature that had to be at least seven feet tall, walking across the road that we did not take. It looked in our direction as it crossed the road before it continued to walk into the woods on the other side of the road. What really surprised me was its color. It was a light brown color, almost like the color of cork on a bulletin board. My observation lasted not more than 10 seconds before the creature disappeared into the woods. It did occur to me to alert the other trainees in the truck, but I immediately thought that by the time I did, they would awaken, crane their necks to look out the back, and by that time not see anything. This all occurred to me in milliseconds. So we continued to drive to our guard site while my mind was going over all sorts of possibilities. We arrived about 10 minutes after the sighting. It was so remote, and despite the fact that we had 10 live rounds for our M16s, I sort of felt like the creature knew I saw it and might come to get me when it got dark. Yunabia and I loafed around the bridge lane engineer vehicles, and suddenly I felt compelled to tell Yunabia what I saw. Apparently, Samoans are very superstitious, and Yunabia became apprehensive and frightened. I was scared he might shoot me by mistaking me for Bigfoot. I felt obliged to stay close to him to preclude any mistaken identities once it became dark. We were picked up at 0400 the next morning without incident. I did not retell my sighting to any of the others for fear of ridicule. But that's my story. I reiterate that there was no doubt that what I saw was Bigfoot. I've seen wild bears, moose, wolverines, and other creatures of the North Woods. I've been to the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness in northeastern Minnesota three times, and I'm totally familiar and comfortable in the wilderness. I was not sleepy at the time or subject to wild imaginations due to our training, which was not rigorous. I think what surprised me most was the region of the country we were in, which as far as I knew at the time is not famous for Bigfoot sightings, and its color. I also would not expect to see a cork-colored Bigfoot. 
I've told others this story, and some scoff and some believe, but I would not believe it unless I saw it myself, which I did. If my story resembles others that have occurred in that region, I would be interested to hear a reply. I am curious if others have sighted Bigfoot in that region, or others that have matched my description. There was more to relate to you, such as the way it turned towards us. It happened very fast, and it was a few years ago. Hope this information helps you and your endeavors. Eric Youngdahl Fort Lewis Army Base, 1966 Pierce County, Washington State My sighting occurred February 27, 1966, while stationed at Fort Lewis, Washington. There was me and four other men out on survival training in the Nisqually River Basin, about 30 miles south of Tacoma, Washington. We decided to go to the river that day to catch some fish. As we approached the river, we could see the creature was kneeling by the water. Then, as we walked towards it, the creature stood up on two legs and looked at us, then turned and walked into the river and swam easily to the other side. When it reached the other side, it turned toward us and looked at us for about ten minutes, then turned and walked into the forest. The thing that got our attention was the way it moved. It walked for about eight yards on two legs, just like a man. We stood and watched it. I would say, initially, it was only ten to twenty feet from us. We could see it very clearly. It stood eight to nine feet tall, had kind of a reddish-brown hair covering most of its body, except for its hands and face. The head was the shape of a man. It appeared to have no neck. The mouth was large with protruding lips. We saw no teeth. It did not bear its teeth. Its nose was quite large and lay flat against its face. The encounter lasted for twenty minutes, and not once during this time was there any sign of aggression. It seemed more curious than aggressive. We returned to our camp more amazed than fearful. Fort Lewis Army Base Maneuvers Mount Rainier, 1978 My name is Carol Steckel, and I'm about to tell you about my domestic partner, Tim Rivas Sr. Tim was in the 9th Infantry Division, 3rd Battalion, 47th Infantry, Combat Support Recon Platoon, North Fort Lewis. He was on aggressor detail on Mount Rainier training area. It was late one night, and he wanted to get off alone. He walked off a ways from his army buddies so he could have a smoke and eat something. Revis was crouching down and had some small pieces of wood so he could heat up his dinty moor beef stew. Then he felt he was being watched by something. He turned around, and only a few feet away, leaning against a tree, was this Bigfoot. He didn't seem afraid, he just stared at Tim. The Bigfoot was tall and slender, reminding Tim that the creature was probably very young. Tim also said the Bigfoot had the reddest eyes he had ever seen, and to the best of his knowledge, they could have been bloodshot eyes. Tim said he chose that area to relax at because there was some green moss on the ground. He stopped at that spot to smoke and heat up and eat his can of stew. His stint in the Army was from 1977 to 1979 at Fort Lewis Army Base, Washington. The incident with the Bigfoot was in 1978. He never told any military what he saw because he thought they wouldn't believe him. But Tim would never make up this story. He's a quiet, private person who usually keeps everything to himself. He gave permission to use his real name, which is Timothy R. Rivas. Carol Steckel Fort Lewis Army Base, Pierce County, Washington, 1989 we were on a field exercise with the 864th Engineer Battalion in November of 1989. About all I can remember is that we were about one mile from the Nisqually River. We marched out the day before and built a three-rope bridge for the Rangers. It was in the training area northwest of the old C-5 mock-up or training aircraft. It was oddly clear and the moon was bright. A fellow soldier and I were sitting in a foxhole about 4 a.m. in the morning when my buddy suddenly exclaimed, what the hell is that? When I looked directly in front, about 25 yards, I witnessed something that scared me. It was a human form, 7 to 8 feet tall, walking with a slight hunch about the shoulder and making a low grunting noise. This thing was just unbelievable. There was a slight musky odor, but not too bad. It smelled like a wet dog. Anyway, my friend and I told our story to our squad leader. He just laughed. 
He spoke to our first sergeant, and we were known as the two Bigfoot hunters. Well, after that, we didn't mention it anymore. But listen up, folks. There are things out there on the base unimaginable. I always said I would have to see it to believe it. Well, I saw it. Murph. Regarding that report, this letter. A follow-up email came in from a man living in Iowa who took over his parents' family farm there. His letter was brief. I read the message about the sighting at Fort Lewis in fall of 1989. I believe I was that man's sergeant. I will verify his story as true and tell you additionally that Fort Lewis has a whole company of Bigfoot living on that base. Must be 70 or more scattered around that base, and that ain't no joke. A few get shot to death by scared E2s once in a great while, and mostly the sightings don't get reported. Those that do, nothing is said. I personally believe that base was constructed to protect that large contingency of big feet because no effort was ever made to rid the base of them and believe me, we could have annihilated all of them big feet if we had been ordered to do that. No problem. Remember, we love the smell of napalm in the morning. Huh. The order never came down that I know about but no effort was made to keep the grunts from shooting them either. I read the reports about the big feet don't die but become invisible that's bullpucky. I helped remove a dead one that was shot in 1988. It was roughly eight feet tall, male, the strangest stiff I ever saw. It was shot up pretty good, but I could see its features plainly. We loaded it on the back of a truck, covered it with canvas, and off it went. To where, I don't know. We were ordered not to talk about it. The base there at Louis is massive and strategically mapped in sections, divided by roads, it has dense forests on the base and the surrounding terrain with vegetation you can't crawl through. It's a dense jungle in some parts of that base. There was an off-limits part of the base where nobody was allowed. Most didn't know it existed. So I'm writing to support any question that Big Feet are thick at Louie. Yes, sir. Signed, Old Sarge, Alamaki County, Iowa, February 12, 2009. Fort Lewis Army Base, May 1984, Pierce County, Washington. I was a staff sergeant of military police at the time of the incident, stationed at Fort Lewis. I had gone to investigate a reported disturbance within the tree line near the post stockade. This occurred in late spring, May 1984. It was approximately 0300 to 0400 hours. The bars closed shortly before the call. The MPDO heard strange cries from within the forest and wanted it checked out. I went in one direction while the canine unit went another. We were to sweep the area. We planned to meet up at an old railroad spur not far into the trees. I saw nothing nor heard a sound until the canine unit apparently made contact with something. I heard five distinct pistol shots, at which point I heard a deep, guttural growl building into an extremely high-pitched howling. I've never heard anything like that, and the sounds of something large crashing through the thick brush and foliage in the area. Important to note that I was too young, gung-ho, and stupid to be scared. I was armed with my issue 45 and 12-gauge riot gun and continued on to the rendezvous point, hearing nothing further. At the spur, sort of sunken with high berms, I went up the far side and halted at the edge of a large meadow. The captain was already there at the rendezvous point, having not seen anything either. Neither of us knew that the K.O. had fled the forest on the tail of the dog. We were about to head back when I caught movement in the adjacent tree line off to my left. I could plainly see a large dark shape walking along the southeast edge of the meadow, but still within the tree line. Mount Rainier was southeast of my location, and this was the direction of movement. It appeared to be a bear. I held my weapon at the ready. When the subject turned and came out into the meadow, it was approximately 35 yards from our position, moving from left to right. It did not register at first. I nearly pulled the trigger, but something didn't look right. Bears walk on all four legs. This bear was clearly walking on two legs. It was getting on towards morning. False dawn was in evidence. I could see well enough, but not clearly enough to make out facial features. All I can figure is the wind must have shifted, 
for the creature stopped and turned its head and looked directly at me. It turned its whole body and just stood there looking at us, arms by its sides. The creature was not threatening us at all, so I lowered my weapon and did not open fire. I remember the head moving slightly from side to side. It did not move closer, and neither did we. We stared at each other for at least two to three minutes. Ultimately, it resumed its original direction and walked away, looking back once, but kept going, disappearing into the opposite tree line. The Bigfoot was covered with short, dark hair, massive arms and shoulders, probably seven and a half to eight feet tall. The neck was not evident, the head bullet-shaped, though due to poor light conditions, I could not see facial features clearly. I estimate the weight at close to 500 pounds. The tracks we found later were cast with plaster of Paris. The rangers used to have problems with something nasty across the Nisqually River over in the rangers' Rainier training area. My son likes WWF wrestling, and I met Andre the Giant and shook his hand. If he's really seven foot four, then this creature was taller than that. I'm six foot five and recall the size difference between Andre the Giant and me. At the time of the sighting, we were neither drunk, crazy, or on drugs. It wasn't a man in a suit either, not on a military base. I'll tell you now, no official report was ever made. I valued my army career more than a few moments of limelight. As I said, I saw an ape-like creature. I never said I saw a Bigfoot. I'm 43 now, retired military. Except for the plaster cast, I can't prove any of this. All I can tell you is I know what I saw. It no longer matters who believes me. Thanks for listening. I think you might find this video of interest as well. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.